ones. Then it will be community uh, sentiment, but not democratic, so to speak. It would give higher weight to those that prove good in estimating what is going to happen on the market before, right? So it is still community sentiment, but not every, everyone gets the same level of uh, kind of, um, so, but it that automatically takes those that were good performers in the past, their vote gets taken with higher weight. So, and as I say, so this is, the algorithm generates a signal. How you will use it, it doesn't mean that you should follow advice of the person with the highest weight, as we just discussed. But it is a way to aggregate huge amount of data. There are gazillions of market analysts uh, and uh, uh, summary, and this is the whole this big mantra with big data nowadays, uh, you need tools that summarize your data in some meaningful way so that you can use it either in business or whatever you are doing. Yeah? And that's a very useful algorithm for that, uh, that purpose. Uh, so play with this, uh, and if you have any questions or you don't understand something about the algorithm, uh, just come to my office, I will be more than happy. And I didn't put official office hours, but uh, you simply knock on my door uh, and uh, in, in most of the time I will be able to help you on the spot. So, uh, yeah, so please make this course uh, useful because uh, these kind of algorithms are increasingly important algorithms that aggregate uh, data. Now, what we saw is how to, uh, ah, another thing uh, that I tell you, so that was also Mohammed's idea, my student's idea. When, with this voting algorithm, right, Sometimes uh, there is a natural ordering among candidates. Uh, for example, if you are voting how many stars each movie is worth, then five stars is more than four stars. Now the question, the, the algorithm only counts uh, just how many people vote for the same, uh, for the, for the same mark. But one can argue, if I give five uh, stars to a movie, someone else gives uh, four stars, and someone gives only one star, then the person, and say majority gives five stars, then one should, can, tell, uh, can say that the person who gave four stars was better voter than the person who gave it only one star, right? So then credibility of each voter would not be assigned uh, just to the item he chose, but part of it would be assigned to nearby items, uh, right? To take into account uh, that, uh, you know, uh, also votes that are in close proximity of his vote should get some of his credibility. So you can take into account distances as well. And the, the algorithm is really very malleable, right? It's, uh, you can tweak it to do uh, for all sorts of different uh, purposes. Uh, and when you are thinking about um, say using it to, to aggregate stock market data, you might uh, want to think uh, what would be the best form of the algorithm. Okay, <clears throat> but still here we rely on the fact that the choices are discrete, right? So it's either four stars or five stars. There is no option to give 4.27 stars. 
But for some applications, uh, the, the values are naturally continuous kind of real numbers, uh, right? So we want to be able to aggregate um, a real number, the, the data that are real numbers, uh, right? For example, um, uh, if you have sensors that measure temperature and uh, say there are 10 sensors of campus, and what you are interested is kind of overall temperature, some kind of mean temperature uh, on campus, right? Or, you know, when they give temperature in Sydney, what does it mean? You know, temperature here is totally different than temperature uh, in, the, on, in the west of Sydney. So the readings from several places, uh, you want to aggregate them. Right? But these readings are naturally real numbers, not discrete, uh, few discrete values. So this is our next topic. We want to discuss uh, how to aggregate um, kind of continuous uh, uh, data. And um, you know, the, if you, you know, the, the You know, this is what they call data analytics. Uh, it's one of the aspects. Uh, uh, you know, when you have huge amount of data, the whole point is you want to summarize it in a useful way that can help you make the right decision, either business decision um, or whatever you are trying to do. Uh, so for this reason, this is an important topic. Okay, so first, uh, um, a few uh, things that I want to refresh your memory about. Um, so, uh, um, so if you have a bunch of random variables, x1, x2, up to xn, okay, does everyone here know what a random variable is? So how many of you have never seen a random variable? So all of you have seen a random variable. Where have you seen it? I haven't seen myself a random variable ever. I heard they exist. Okay, so uh, random. Uh, so this is a sequence of random variables of finite length. is called a random vector. Uh, when is a vector i? Uh, let's see what's the other variation. I i d. What does it mean i i d? Yes. Exactly, so this means independent, identically distributed random variables. This is a technical concept, a concept that formalizes our notion of repeating an experiment, assuming that the circumstances did not change. Right? So, um, the, uh, so random variables xi are independent uh, if uh, uh, probability uh, that uh, uh, xi uh, belongs to a set of values and uh, say x uh, say x1 and x2. x1 belongs to S and x2 belongs to some other set D uh, is equal simply product of probabilities that x1 belongs to S times the probability that uh, x2 uh, belongs to D. 
So taking them jointly is the same as taking them uh, separately and multiplying the, uh, the probabilities. Uh, uh, okay, so assume that, so I give you a uh, meter and I give you an object to measure its length. Uh, if you are doing it in a lab and you are aiming to get as high accuracy as possible, what would you do? If you have, you know, whenever you measure, there is always certain measurement error. How do we try to minimize this measurement error? Yes. So what measurements on any average? Exactly. So what we do is uh, we make several measurements and average them. Now, why do we do that? What's the rationale? Why averaging several measurements uh, improve the quality of the result? This is our next topic, so um, the mean, we take the mean, which is x1, x2 plus, plus xn, and we divide by n. So we want to now figure out, so each of the random variables is the result of that particular measurement. And for some reason, if we sum them up and divide by n, this is supposed to be better. And we want to figure out why it is better. Right? It's not obvious that uh, it should be better. Well, first, let's see what is the expected value of the mean. Uh, well, expected value of the mean, expected value of the sum, of uh, uh, independent uh, random variables, equally distributed random variables will be E of x1, right? Expectation is a linear operator, E of xn divided by n. And what is if the measuring unit is not biased. Sorry, if the measuring device is not biased. But what does it mean it's not biased? The expected value is the true value. It's not that you have a volt meter that systematically shows uh, uh, two volts above the real voltage plus some noise, right? If we assume that uh, the instrument is unbiased, then all of these expectations are equal because they are independent, equally distributed. So this will be n times mu divided by n. So you get just mu. So if these guys are unbiased, then their mean itself is also unbiased. Now let's compute the variance of uh, this uh, estimator. So what is the variance of uh, x? How do we define the variance? Well, that's the expected deviation from the true value from the mean squared. Right? So in our case, this will be expected value of uh, x1 plus x2 plus, plus xn divided by n minus mu squared, which is equal to, uh, now if I put mu on top here, I have to multiply it by n, but instead of multiplying it by n, I'll uh, take it n many times. And so this will be E of uh, x1 minus mu uh, 
plus uh, x2 minus mu plus plus xn minus mu divided by n, right? So uh, now how do we handle? So I guess I can put this one up and also this now. Okay. So let's see what we uh, uh let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so what do we have now if you Okay, so then if you square this, what, ah, I forgot square up here. Ah, okay, arrow and then square this BC on top. Okay, so if I square this, I get the expected value of, uh, I guess I can take 1 over n outside, so it would be 1 over n squared, and then this is uh, expected value of, uh, um, when I square this, I multiply each pair, right, including each one with its own, so uh, this will be um, sum of x1 minus x i minus mu squared right when i goes from 1 to n plus sum when i is not equal to j of xi minus mu times xj minus mu, uh, which is equal to uh, 1 over n squared. Now, if a random variable, so this is uh, sum uh, of i equals from 1 to n, expected value of xi minus mu squared plus and because the variables are independent, uh, expectation of the product is product of expectations. So if x, y are independent, then expectation of x, y is equal expectation of x times expectation of y. So, but uh, expectation of each of these, uh, right? So this will be plus sum i equals not equal to j expectation of xi minus mu expectation of xj minus mu, but expectation of xi is just mu. So each of these is uh, zero, and I get. <coughs> that uh, I get 1 over n squared. All of these, because they are identically distributed, what is this? Uh, this is just the variance of, uh, uh, of x, right? So this is uh, 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 variance. So this is n times uh, variance of x, which gives you variance of x divided by n, right? So what does this mean? It means that if you take the mean of several measurements, the variance of the, of the measurement will be 
1 over n times the variance of each measurement. So the variance, because the variance so much shrinks, you get more reliable uh, estimate. So this explains why we perform several measurements and take the mean. Because it's unbiased, you get the same expectation, but the variance drops, becomes only 1 over n of the uh, variance of the instrument. So, and this, of course, produces a much more accurate um, estimate. Okay, so now, let me see what's Um, okay, so now let's uh, uh, com do something else, a different uh, problem. Uh, so can you move the camera for, to this one? expected value of the mean is uh, just uh, the same right which is the expected value of uh, each of these uh, arms uh, right because they are independent and equally distributed so to get a good estimate of the true value you simply find the mean but assume now that you don't know what the variance of your instrument is and uh, you have no gold standard you don't have a very precise lab uh, measuring device all what you have are the measurements done by that instrument and you want to estimate variance you want to estimate how accurate it is right but without using a gold standard how do we do that how do you estimate the variance of the instrument if you repeatedly measure the same quantity how would you from these values yes okay so here is Let's, because uh, this n minus 1 looks mysterious, right? So uh, let's first uh, do it wrong way, so just that you see where the problem might be. One can say the following. Okay, the variance of my instrument is uh, measurement minus mean squared, right? So it's... Uh, uh, sorry, the variance of x is the expected value of this. Well, but I don't have mu. But we know that the mean approximates well mu. So what I can say, well, this will be approximately equal to the expectation of x minus the mean of x uh, squared, right? Uh, and how can I approximate this? Well, I can simply take the mean of all of these, so this will be x1 minus x bar squared plus x2 minus x bar squared plus 
uh, xn minus x bar squared uh, divided by n. And this should be now approximately equal to um, uh, n times variance of x divided by n. So voila, this should be approximately the variance of my instrument. Now, which step here is fallacious? You see, it turns out, as you will see in a moment, that this is not quite true. The reason is uh, that this guy slightly underestimates this guy. Yeah? It is not an unbiased estimator of the variance. In fact, uh, the, this point, uh, the mean, is exactly the value that minimizes. Uh, so if you have x1, x2, up to xn, then, and you are looking for a value, say, y, such that uh, uh, sum of uh, uh, x i minus y squared is minimal, you can differentiate this with respect to y, set the partial derivative equal to zero, and it's easy to see that uh, uh, for that this happens when y is in fact precisely the mean of all these values. So we now want to see how much how to get a proper unbiased estimation of the variance. Okay. So, without making unwarranted assumptions. Okay, so we will um, To compute this, uh, let us compute, in fact, what the expected value of uh, sum i equals from 1 to n xi minus the mean squared is. So we want to compute uh, this. So this is equal the expected value of sum i <coughs> equals from 1 to n uh, xi squared minus 2xi x mean uh, plus uh, x bar squared. Now we can use linearity of expectation, and we get that this is equal e of uh, uh, this is equal to sum i equals from one to n e of x i squared minus two times sum of x i right, um, minus expectation of uh, 2 times sum xi times x bar, right, uh, plus expectation of x bar squared. But what is sum of uh, uh, xi? How is this sum related to this guy? Yeah? How is the sum of all random variables xi related to the mean? Hmm? Multiply n. Of course, multiply it by n. So this is then equal to the sum of E of, uh, because they are identically distributed, we can just say
say the expectation of x squared. Uh, in fact, I should uh, have written it like this uh, to make it not confusing. Uh, so minus uh, this will be uh, two um, <coughs> n, and then here is uh, uh, x bar squared and expected value of this uh, plus, and this goes from i to n, plus uh, sum i equals from 1 to n expectation of x bar squared. But they are all identically distributed, so this will be equal to n times expectation of x squared minus 2n expectation of x bar squared plus n times expectation of x bar squared. So now this n times and this minus 2n cancel partly out and we get that this is n times expectation of uh, x squared minus n times expectation of x bar squared. Now, how is expectation of x squared related to the variance of x? Well, variance of uh, x is equal to the expected value of x minus mu squared, right? So this is equal to expected value of x squared minus 2 mu expected value of x plus mu squared, which is equal expected value of x squared minus uh, expected, this is also mu, right? So we get minus mu squared. So this means if you solve this for e of x squared, you get that e of x squared is equal to variance of x plus mean squared. <coughs> So now it's easy to finish off this calculation. You know, in big data, statistics reigns. So it's a very good idea to take a statistics course while you are a student, um, at least in introductory course, because uh, everything today becomes its kind of statistics. I'll tell you a joke about statistics. So, so um, a very poor person asks uh, a statistician, so I've heard this word statistics. What is it about? And it says, I'll explain to you very easily. You see, I eat meat, you eat cabbage. Statistics tells us that on average, we have a nice stew, both of us. So, so um, statistics is kind of tricky matter. So what did we see? We got the expected value of sum i equals from 1 to n xi minus x <coughs> mean uh, squared is equal to n times uh, expected value of x squared minus n times expected value of uh, x bar squared. Now, what is expected value of x squared? Well, that's variance of x uh, plus mu squared, right? 
minus n times uh, what is the variance of x bar? Uh, what is the variance of x bar? We just computed it. Huh? What did we get? The, the variance of x bar is precisely variance of x divided by n. Right? So this will be variance of x divided by n plus mu squared. And if you simplify this, you get n times variance of x plus n times mu squared minus variance of x minus n times uh, mu squared. Now this cancels out that. And you get that this is just equal n minus 1 times variance of 